Griffin on the break. Russ Westbrook comes flying in for a putback dunk. Going against one of his, his many former teams. The dad bod god stepping outside for a three. He had 34 points, 13 rebounds, and eight dimes. Jokic is going to find Brody. And Brody went for 14 and 11. And the Nuggets, who are down at halftime, win by 25. And Russ, absolutely going to let you know about that. Nikola Jokic, we're letting you know about his 96th career, 30 point, 10 rebound, 5 assist game, passing Carl Malone for 7th most in NBA history. His 4th straight 30 point, 10 rebound, 5 assist game, tied for the longest streak in his career, tied for the longest streak in Nuggets history. And one! As we join now by our Anscape analyst, it's Justin Tinsley, getting up early with us on SportsCenter AM. It's one thing to quantify everything that we've seen from Nikola Jokic. What are you seeing when you see the dad by God in full effect? First of all, I love that nickname, the dad by God. I may have to steal that, but <laughs> we're looking at a future top 10 player of all time, a three-time MVP who is somehow having the best start of his career. We've seen this stat floating around the internet. He's averaging more points than Shaq during his MVP, MVP season, rather. More rebounds than Tim Duncan during his MVP season. And, and more assists than Magic Johnson during the 89-90 season. And statistically speaking, we're looking at a season that's comparable only to somebody like Wilt Chamberlain, man. So, look, last night showed one thing. Anthony Davis is the MVP candidate. But Nikola Jokic is the MVP. And now Denver's won 13 of their last 14 against the Lakers. And there is no team in the league that, that is in, inside the head of, of one particular opponent quite like Denver is the Lakers. And that starts with number 15. That's a tremendous point. One is a candidate. One is the actual MVP. Jokic's averages. And just because Justin ran through them now, 30 points, 14 rebounds, 11 assists per game. On average, it's 57% for the floor and 56% from three. And then there's the just absolute unit, the freaking Victor Wembanyama. Air France helping key this 17-point comeback against the Dubs. Justin, what's your biggest takeaway from that latest win for this frisky Spurs team? I mean, you all were just talking about it when you were going over the highlights. To me, this was really a game of two halves. In the first half, the San Antonio couldn't, they couldn't buy a bucket. But in the second half, they scored 66, 66 points, rather. And that's including embracing a 17-point deficit and going up on a 33 to 13 fourth quarter. And this is also including holding Steph Curry to 14 points. And he missed 11 of his 16 shots. So you've got to give credit to the Spurs for that. But the straw that stirred the drink was, of course, Wimby. This guy was dominant on both sides of the ball, especially in that second half and fourth quarter. Like, he was he was dominant in the paint, blocking shots. He was finding, finding teammates for ridiculous dimes, and he was getting his own shots. And also, man, th look, I know it's only 17 games into the season. We're almost a fourth of the way through the season. But for a young team like the Spurs, you cannot underestimate what a win like this against the Golden State Warriors does for their psyche moving forward. It's not just that you win, it's who you beat, exactly. You beat the Warriors, maybe you send a message. And to your point about Wemby, scoring or assisting on 24 of the Spurs' 33 points in the fourth quarter, again, as they were plus 20 in that final frame. Justin Tinsley and one. Thank you, sir. I don't know, friends, if we're fully appreciating what Jokic has been up to. So, so let's try, right? Because the reigning MVP, he's averaging 29.7 points per game. That's a higher clip than both Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal's MVP seasons, right? It's also higher than any of Larry Bird's three years winning the award. And it's not just the scoring. Jokic is averaging 11.7 assists a game. Not only is that his first time in double digits, it's more than Steve Nash and Russell Westbrook in their MVP seasons. It even exceeds Magic Johnson's average when he won the award in 1990. And should we just call him Mr. Clean? Because he has been cleaning the glass, flirting with almost 14 boards the night. Right, the MVP. He's clearing in terms of rebounds. Tim Duncan, Akeem Olajuwon, and the round mound of the rebound himself, Charles Barkley. And all of those stats add up to ESPN Bet, making Jokic the favorite to win his fourth MVP. He would be the sixth player to win the award at least four times, joining the legends of the game. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Bill Russell, LeBron James, and Wilt Chamberlain. He is having a historic start to the season. The Nuggets are still sort of digging themselves out, though, of that slow start that they had to the season. What does that tell you, Brian? It tells me that they really, really need him because when, he, when he's been away from the team or off the floor, they've been a completely different team. I would say that his biggest 
uh, case is this statistic that blows me away. We've only seen one guy in the modern era win four in Those five years. Blow you away? That, that blew me away. That was extremely <laughs> impressive. We've seen one guy in the modern era win four MVPs in five years. That was LeBron. Now, there's a bunch of numbers here. I don't want you to pay attention to all of them. I'm going to make it real simple. For every hundred times the, the Nuggets have the ball, okay, when Jokic is on the court, they score 33 more points. I'm going to say that again. Forget about those numbers. <laughs> For every hundred times they have the ball when he's on the court, they score 33 more points than when they don't have him for the hundred times on the court. That's like Giannis, just so you know, Giannis is leading the league in scoring yeah. at 32 points a game. Right. And he has about 100 possessions in a game, give or take. It's like having an extra number one score in the league come onto the court when Jokic comes on the court. When he goes off, it's like losing Jokic and that leading score. This is compelling, okay? I thought that the bar was too high for him to win a fourth MVP this year. He's clearing that bar. He's clearly the best player in the league. He's clearly having the best season of his career. Anytime you're the best player in the league, you're supposed to be competing for a title. An organization's supposed to do supposed to do the necessary things and put the pieces around you so that you have the best chance to win a title. Bob, who mm. Jokic have the best pieces around oh, him. Say this, I'm going to answer your question. Please. If he only wins one title, it'll be a travesty. For how good he is. When I was a GM with Steph Curry, you are so appreciative to have a player like that. And I think Denver feels the same way about Jokic. But then there's a pressure. Of, there's, a, there's a pressure because you have this player for, you hope, at least 10 years. When I was with the Warriors, I felt like you're lucky to have this guy. You have to win championships. Because these guys do not come along once every 40, 30, ever 50 years. They don't come along in your organization. So when you are there... You have to say, we have to do it now. Because there ain't going to be another Jokic in this league. I, I understand that. But... Burnout. We all experience it at some point. It's so important to me that I've actually been working on it in therapy. In fact, with the help of better in this league. I, I understand that. But... They don't have one championship. They are now sort of in the late stage of their Giannis situation. They've used all their first-round picks. They're $75 million into the tax. They have no maneuverability to fix the team. Denver is trying to avoid being in that situation. And, and here's the thing. If, if that happened, if I was GM, either, you have, you, at least I did. Everybody does the job differently. I would feel like I blew it. If I had Curry for 12 years and left with one, I would, I would, I would feel, I would be like, you should just dump out of me. And, and that's, I didn't do it. And, and that's the thing. You, if you're the, the front office of the Denver Nuggets, you cannot take this man for granted, right? You should always try to improve your roster. You should always watch and see what guys around him doing. And to be honest, we've been waiting on Jamal Murray to elevate his game. Yes, he had a good game last game, but that's like one every six games. That's not going to get it, right? Russell Westbrook, he 